Hello everybody, Jake here from FM Scout and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to start your saves in FM21 when taking over a new club. Especially to the players that are newer to the game, taking that first step into managing a club are often the scariest but also the most fun part of Football Manager. So today I'm going to be taking you guys through a very simple guide on a good way to start off your saves in FM21. If you do enjoy today's video don't forget to hit the like button and comment down below who you've been managing in FM21 so far and how well it's been going and if you didn't already know we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel very soon so if you have been enjoying the videos and you see that yourself that you're not subscribed then if you could hit that subscribe button that would be a massive help. So you can see here I have taken over at Leicester as the manager. Now as a fan of the Premier League I know a bit already about Leicester but we're going to go into this as if I have no idea about them. So what should you do first? Well I always tend to like looking at the finances straight away so if we go on this side here you can see all your different tabs and if you click the finance screen you can see how Leicester are doing financially. We can see that they've got £33 million of balance in the bank which is obviously pretty good and they seem like quite a financially stable club you can see there's a quite a high wage budget not that big of a transfer budget for a Premier League teams but this is due to the whole coronavirus situation obviously finances will help you do everything from stadium expansions facility upgrades getting new staff in playing payer wages and of course signing new players so it's something that you always do want to keep an eye on so you know where you stand like if you see that your finances are okay like Leicester's here we don't have to worry too much about quickly selling off players to balance the books but if you see that your club's balance is very much in the red and in debt then you probably need to do something about it so once you know financially how you stand that's probably going to help you know how you're going to go forward with the club but before you go looking into your team I think it's a very good idea just to hit this transfer button here and then hit clauses and you can see if there's any clauses you can sell to quickly make your team some money. In this case you can see we can make some money by selling this Danny Drinkwater clause. He's probably not going to play another 18 times for Chelsea. Let's, so let's sell that clause and then we get 300 whatever it was, £300,000 into the club. Probably straight into the transfer budget. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. Straight into the transfer budget. And that boosts the finances a little bit. Always a good idea to check there before you start going into too much detail. But once that's done, I would suggest you go to team report. Once you hit this team report tab, you then want to click squad depth. And then what I like to do is here, instead of showing, this is showing a 4-4-2 formation and the players that best suit that. I think it's best just to show every position so you know what your tactical style will be. So you go to position overview, current ability, and this allows you to see how your team is set out. So you can see that according to this, Leicester have three good goalkeepers, one great striker, five good strikers. You get the idea. It shows you where your best positions are. Now, based on the fact that we've got nine good players on the wing and seven good players on the other wing, that would suggest to me, at least, that Leicester might be good playing a formation that has some wide attacking players. You can then click on the each position to see who all the players are. So in this case, it's telling us that our best right winger is Ricardo Pereira, but then also our best right back is Ricardo Pereira and Wilfred Ndidi. Assuming Ndidi would play midfield, that would mean probably Pereira at right back. And then you start thinking, OK, we need to sign a right winger. And that's how you can kind of go about it from the team report. And this is going to set the basis of everything you do in the few months building up to the season, whether it's deciding on the formation or deciding which positions you need to improve. So this page is not only good at finding your team's strengths, but also finding your team's weaknesses. And that moves on to the next step, which is to go to the tactics page. Now, if you don't know too much about tactics, there is the tactics induction that you get given every time you start a save. And for the sake of this video, we're just going to use one of the preset tactics that's already on here. That will mean you don't have to do much fiddling around with it. And then as you go through your season and you learn more about Football Manager, you can tinker it to your own style as you learn more about the game and your team. So if we look at these, let's say, OK, let's go for the Tiki Taka formation. The thumbs up will show the tactical styles that your assistant manager thinks you'll suit. So we're going to go for the Tiki Taka tactical style. Then it will show some formations that suit that style quite well. You can make your own, but like I say, for the sake of this video, if you are a new player as well, just stick to some of the presets for now. Leicester seem pretty good in the central midfield areas and on the wings. So let's go for this 4-3-3 DM wide formation. Now your team screen will be set to that formation and you can start picking the players for your team. And again, if you don't know too much about the club, sometimes the best side in, you can obviously work out who are the better players through preseason friendlies and your first few games. But if you click on each position, it does recommend the best player in each position. So obviously, Vardy is the best striker. If we go to goalkeeper, it'll be Schmeichel. Right back, we'll probably have Pereira. He's injured, but anyway, we're just going to fill him in just so we know what kind of team we're looking at. Castagna is our best left back. You get the idea. Let's build this team. So there you go. We've quickly filled it in 
and seeing this is our team. Again, this is a good time if you didn't figure it out in the last part to decide where your weaknesses are. For example here, we can see we've got some injuries in some of our key players. If we are going to use Madison on the wing, we probably don't want to do that. We might want to use him in midfield, which will mean that we might need a new left winger. And that's kind of how you can determine how you're going to go about managing your team and making it your own. But before you dip your toes into the transfer market, I think an often very overlooked part of Football Manager is quickly heading to the development centre. Before we talk about the development centre, I'd just like to say my channel link will be in the description, my personal channel. Over there, we're currently doing a Chelsea beta save. A lot of you guys are enjoying it. And thank you to everyone who has came over there recently. We've almost hit 550 subscribers. Maybe by the time this goes out, we can hit that. So thank you for all your support. But yes, the development center. This is where your youth teams are all kept. So in this case, let's have an under 23 team and an under 18 team that you can access here and see who the best players are and the players with the most potential. So you know what's coming up. For example, we might go over, oh, who was that here? The first team candidate that's being recommended by our head of youth development is Luke Thomas. We can see... Okay, he's a decent left back already with the potential to be a very good left back. Maybe we don't need to sign a backup left back. Maybe Luke Thomas can do it for us this season. So then all you do is you hit the development tab and then you hit move to senior squad. And then he'll be part of your senior team and available to be picked. I find that's a good thing to do at the start of every season just to check the development centre. If it's something you don't regularly look at, you might miss out on a few players that will mean, for example, like we found in Thomas, we now don't need to sign a left back, that saves more money and means we can invest it into other weaker areas of the squad. Furthermore, in the development centre, not only your youth teams, you can click the loan tab and see any players who are currently out on loan. For example, we can see here that Philip Benkovic is out on loan. Looks like an okay player, not great, but if he came back off loan next season, maybe we wouldn't need another centre back, maybe he could be a rotation option. And that's the kind of thing you just need to be aware of. And with the development centre, you can often find them little hidden gems. So now in this case, let's say that we do want to buy a left winger with the budget we've got. We'll move Madison into midfield and decide that we want a new left winger with Leicester. Now, I'm sure if I look detailed enough, I could find a left winger that could play there for Leicester. But for the sake of the video, we're going to do that. So what you want to do is look at the scouting and transfers tab. Scouting is where you find players to bring into your club. And the transfer tab is where you track incoming and outgoing transfers as they are taking place. So obviously we haven't made any transfers yet so we're going to move to the scouting tab and we can see already luckily our scouts seem to match what we think and they want us to sign a winger. Is he a left winger? Yes he is. So maybe we do want to go ahead with this Gineppo guy from Southampton but we'll see what else the scouts have to offer. So here you can add to a shortlist so that you don't forget about these players. Once you've added a player to the shortlist, all you have to do is click this shortlist option and it will show all the best players that you've found that you've saved to your shortlist. For example, João Pedro looks like a good player. Reese Nelson looks like a good player. This guy looks like a good player with a good scout recommendation and within our price budget, so he could be someone to look at. So then you start going through these, you can obviously keep going and if you want to as well, you can then send your scouts out on scouting missions. But if you are new to the game, I'd probably suggest keep things basic and just click scouting responsibility here. And if you are in control of assigning scouts and hit delegate and the chief scout will do it for you. So then with very minimal effort, you'll get these scout reports coming in every now and then. Obviously, it won't be as tailored as if you send the scouts out yourself, but you still get some good players. So now we've added a few players that our scouts have recommended, maybe we want to look ourselves. So this page here, the player search tab, is where you can basically become a scout yourself. So this is currently showing every player that would be interested in a move to Leicester City. You can turn it off just by clicking the transfer interested in button here. That will mean you get all the best players come up. Let's just click interested in transfer and then we can also adjust our search to look for only loan listed players. This will save us money in the long run and what would you know we've just found someone who could potentially benefit our team this season. We've got Emile Smith-Rowe here from Arsenal. Maybe he could be a left winger for us. You probably wouldn't need to get him if you're a Leicester manager but for the sake of this video we're going to go ahead and try and get Emile Smith-Rowe into our team. Especially with a £1 million budget, loans are a very good way to get players into your club in Football Manager, so we'll go ahead, we'll make an offer for the loan, it matches what Arsenal want, and they're pretty much 100% guaranteed to accept that loan. So you've identified your targets, you've got some players coming in, you're happy with your squad, what next? What would you go for next? Well, I hit this staff tab and start looking at the behind the scenes at the club and what can be improved. For example here we can see that Leicester aren't too bad in terms of their coaching but we can see here that their physios are quite low. Maybe they need a physio, you look up and you see that they're actually missing a head physio. Physio? Physio I meant. Now there are two ways you can go about this. You can place an advert for a physio and then wait a few days until interested parties come in or you can use a staff search screen which is up here 
where you can filter through and identify the best staff possible. So we know we want a physio, let's go for a physio that is not employed, wants to be a physio of course, and then attributes, let's look for the physiotherapy stat and say you want a physio with 19 physiotherapy. There we go, we've narrowed it down to three people, one wanted by Arsenal, this guy looks like he's wanted by quite a lot of clubs. Let's see if we can approach to get him in our staff team. There you go. Obviously, whistle it down. Don't pay this much for a physio, but we're just going to do it for the sake of the video. And there you go. That is your staff tab looked at. You can sort that out. I would say staff comes after transfers, but a good staff and a good coaching team, scouting team, all of that is very good in helping your club become successful. And that brings us on to the training tab. Now, there's a few things you can do here. I'll be honest, I think for a starting player, training is very complicated and quite scary to look at. It's not complicated once you know what you're doing, but there are a lot of screens and a lot of things to keep your eyes on. And I would suggest personally, and some people will say that this isn't the way to go about it, but I personally would click this button here and delegate your training to someone else. Now I'd keep individual training onto yourself, but for now this will mean that someone else will take over your training and you can do the individual training. If you wanna take a deeper interest into training, there will be a training guide on the channel soon so you guys can figure out the best way to train your squad. But we'll just talk about individual training for now. So for now, Chris Davies, our assistant manager, is taking control of general training. We're gonna do individual training. And let's look at this guy, James Justin. We'll go to him, hit development, hit training, and we can see that currently he has no additional focus. So this individual training here, obviously, is just for James Justin, and this is what we've said we want to control. So what we can pick here is where we want him to train, what position. I think he should train in the right back position, that's fair enough. We can see that his crossing is quite low at 11, so why not train him to be better at crossing? Normal intensity is fine, but for pre-season, we're going to put him on double intensity as he won't be playing many matches, so he shouldn't get too tired and double intensity should be fine for now. So you know financially how you stand. You've sorted your team out. You've sorted your staff out. You've brought in some new players. You've got your team training the way you want them to. What's next? Well, for the final tip, I will say then you should go and look at the facilities page for your club. To find this, you want to go to club info, then click on facilities and you can see what kind of facilities you're working with here at Leicester City. So we can see they've got quite a nicely built stadium, but it's getting quite packed. Maybe in the future we can look at expanding that. Then a thing I would say is good to look at is the training facilities and the youth facilities. We can see that they have great training facilities and we're due to, due to move to a new training ground quite soon. So they're probably gonna be even better soon. And we've got excellent youth facilities, which will mean that the youth players in the youth teams are getting really good training. And then you can have a look at other things that might need improvements. For example, here we can see Leicester's junior coaching and youth recruitment is average and adequate, which isn't great for a team like Leicester where they've got excellent youth facilities. So what's it? what this is saying is once players come into your youth teams, they're getting good training. But what about picking up players that before they even reach the youth team and your junior coaching, which is basically happening behind the scenes on the game, which is where you've got your under 12s, your under 10s teams that you obviously can't influence. But if you improve these facilities, you'll get a better quality of player coming through from your junior academy. So then I think it's always a good idea to go on the club vision page. This is where you can see what the club want you to do, what kind of football they want you to play, what they want you to do in the current season. But there's also this button here, make board request. And I think it's always worth trying at the start of a season to get whatever you can out of a club. Unless they're in a financial crisis, probably don't try it. But we can see that we think we need our youth recruitment improving. So let's try it. We'll say we want to improve our youth recruitment and then in a few days the board will get back to you. Now sometimes if you do have a direct conversation with the board, you can then say to them things like, oh I think we'll be left behind by our rivals. If you haven't been at the club for a while, you're less likely to get these things go through with the board. But I think it's a good idea when it comes up there'll be an option that says, if you don't grant my request I'll have to leave my job. Don't ever click that because 9 times out of 10 the board actually just go, yeah okay get out then. You don't want to do that when you put all your effort in building up a club. And with that being done, you'll have a great overview of your club. Everything will be ticking over nicely and you'll be ready to continue, go through the days, go through your pre-season and hopefully have a successful season too. So that is the end of today's video, guys. Hopefully it has been useful for you guys who are new to the game. And maybe if you've been playing the game for a while, you at least found this interesting and hopefully it could have been useful in some way to you guys. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. All the best Football Manager content. I've been Jake for FM Scout. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.